My name is Emma. I'm 32 years old and expecting my first child in nine months. I want to share my story since life hasn't been easy lately, and I hope it will help someone else who might be going through a similar thing. Michael, my spouse and I, reside in San Francisco. He is a 34-year-old software engineer. Although our life may appear ideal from the outside, the true world is very different. At home, Michael is useless and emotionally inattentive. Despite my pregnancy, he spends most weekends at his parents' place, allowing me to take care of all the domestic responsibilities by myself. I adore photography, and there are little pleasures in preserving moments from my everyday life. However, Michael's persistent criticism and lack of support frequently overshadow them. Michael came home one evening and insisted that I go get alcohol at the convenience store. I reluctantly consented, even though I was tired and felt unloved. He was so insensitive that I felt the weight of it as I made my way to the store. I wondered why he couldn't go himself, but asking him questions would just cause more friction. When I brought the beer back home, Michael hardly gave me a look. Rather, he persisted in critiquing me, identifying shortcomings in all my actions. Though his remarks wounded deeply, I refrained from crying. Our relationship has grown more strained over the past few months, and his actions have gotten more insulting and contemptuous. Michael pretended as if nothing had happened the following morning. He was happy and unaffected by what had happened the night before. I made the decision to prepare a special supper in an attempt to reconcile our developing distance from one another. I spent the entire day preparing his favorite supper, but my efforts were in naught when he came home intoxicated. He insulted me and cast doubt on my abilities to be a good mother and wife. I started to feel more alone and unsupported. Michael insisted on going on a family vacation with his parents as my due date drew near. He waved away my worries, even though I was concerned about traveling so close to my delivery. Just because you're pregnant doesn't mean you're sick, he yelled. His parents supported him, even though they were often critical of me. They were close by, heavily involved in Michael's life, and frequently had different ideas from mine. My greatest concerns materialized on the day of the trip. My water broke just as we were about to depart. I told Michael we had to head to the hospital right away because I was in a panic. Angry that I might damage it, he yanked me out of the car rather than offering assistance. I was taken aback and felt very alone. It was unbelievable to me that he could be so unkind. Luckily, Na, our neighbor, noticed my discomfort. Michael's employer, Na, is a fantastic woman who is married to the CFO. She hurried over to my side and dialed 911. Her prompt action made sure I arrived at the hospital without incident. Na remained by my side, providing consolation and encouragement as I gave birth. In one of the most vulnerable times of my life, her presence was a lifeline. As I held my baby in the hospital, my thoughts kept returning to Michael's ongoing abuse and his family's never-ending condemnation. It was obvious that this was not how I was going to live. Na, who had grown to be a close friend, helped me get through this difficult period. She even told her spouse about the circumstance, which might come in handy later. A video that I had of Michael yanking me out of the car went viral and spread like wildfire while I was in the hospital. His true colors were shown in the video, and the public outcry was intense. After losing his job, Michael had trouble finding another one. Along with his parents, he suffered public humiliation, and his reputation was damaged. It was a severe but appropriate reprimand for his violent actions. Na and my parents provided me comfort and support in the interim. They pushed me to consider my future and the welfare of my unborn child. I started thinking about getting a divorce since I knew that was the only way we could ensure a better future. The proceedings for Michael's divorce were uncomplicated due to the substantial evidence and the influence of society, even if Michael's family reluctantly accepted the conditions. 
after my baby was born, everything in my life started to significantly shift. I came to the realization that I had to decide what was best for my child and myself. Michael's behavior had gotten to the point that I had to consider our future together, since I could no longer deny it. Na remained a rock of support throughout this trying period. She would frequently drop by the hospital to see me, bringing encouragement and food. Mark, her spouse, and the CFO of the business where Michael used to work, offered similar support. Knowing that they both recognized the seriousness of the issue was consoling. Upon my hospital discharge, I moved in with my parents. Even though they were old, they were really kind and supportive. Their San Francisco residence turned into a haven of safety for my infant and me. I could not express how grateful I was for their affection and attention. I began thinking back on the experiences that had brought me to my parents' house as I got comfortable in. People were talking about the viral video of Michael shoving me out of the car everywhere it had gone viral. The public's reaction to Michael was harsh. He struggled to find work after losing his job and was publicly shamed. Despite everything going on, I took comfort in my new regimen. My parents were amazing. They supported me emotionally and helped with the baby. I also started to become closer to Na. She stopped by frequently and I found strength in our chats. She gave guidance and empathy while sharing anecdotes from her life. She was no longer just a neighbor to me. She was a real friend. It was also at this time that I began to think about my legal possibilities. Na recommended that I discuss divorce with a lawyer. Though it was a scary idea, I knew it was essential. The future of my baby rested on it. I got in touch with a sympathetic attorney who could relate to my predicament. We talked about the specifics of my marriage, and I gave the convincing proof of Michael's cruelty and neglect. The public pressure and the viral video made the divorce process simple from the start. Reluctantly, Michael and his family accepted the conditions. There was no other option for them. The societal backlash was severe and the evidence was overwhelming. Although it was relieving to see the process proceed, it was also emotionally taxing. I kept finding happiness in the little things in the interim. My passion for photography has grown once more. I began photographing my infant in order to record each priceless second. These pictures served as a reminder of the brand new, loving and hopeful life I was creating. I met Nas's son, Jake, when we were strolling around the neighborhood one day. He was about my age, and we hit it up right away. I had really missed Jake's kindness and compassion in my connection with Michael. We had easygoing talks, and he frequently offered to watch the baby while I had some alone time. Surprisingly, our friendship began to develop into something more. Jake and I spent more time together, and he became a significant part of my support system. He made me laugh and reminded me that there were good people in the world. My parents also adored him, and they were happy to see me smile again. It was a slow process, but I was beginning to heal. Throughout this period, Na and Mark were incredibly supportive. They helped me navigate the complexities of single motherhood and the emotional aftermath of my divorce. Mark, understanding the pressures of work and family, often gave practical advice, while Na provided a listening ear and a warm heart. Despite the difficulties, I felt a growing sense of empowerment. I was taking control of my life and making decisions that were best for me and my baby. The pain of Michael's neglect and abuse was still there, but it was no longer defining me. I was stronger than I had ever realized. As I continued to navigate life as a new mother and deal with the aftermath of my failed marriage, I found strength in the support around me. My parents, Na and Jake, were constants in my life, and their presence helped me through the toughest days. The divorce proceedings were moving forward, but it wasn't without its emotional toll. Michael's family was in denial about his behavior and tried to paint me as the villain. They couldn't accept that Michael had lost his job and his reputation due to his own actions. Despite this, 
I knew I had to stay strong for my baby. One morning, I received a call from my lawyer. She informed me that Michael wanted to meet and discuss the divorce settlement. I was hesitant, but agreed to the meeting under the condition that it would be supervised by our lawyers. The thought of facing Michael again filled me with anxiety, but I knew it was a necessary step. The discussion was heated. Michael appeared unkempt and resentful, barely resembling the person I used to know. He held me responsible for every misfortune in his life. If you hadn't made such a big deal out of everything, none of this would have happened, he yelled. Even though his remarks hurt, I had to remind myself that this was the same man who had deserted me just when I needed him most. By mediating the conversation, our attorneys made sure it stayed polite. Michael grudgingly consented to the conditions, which included visitation rights and child support. I felt such a huge sense of relief. With this meeting, a difficult chapter in my life came to an end. My folks were excited to hear about the meeting when they got home. I felt a burden leave my shoulders after telling them the specifics. Emma, you're so strong, my mother whispered as she gave me a firm hug. We're pleased with you. It brought me great comfort that they stood with me no matter what. In the meantime, my bond with Jake was growing. He was a breath of fresh air, invariably upbeat and encouraging. He commented to me one evening as we were sitting on the porch, Emma, you're an amazing woman. Despite everything you've gone through, you managed to stand tall. I respect your fortitude. His remarks had a profound effect on me. It was the first time in a long time that I felt seen and valued. Our relationship became closer, and before long, our friendship developed into something more. As we got to spend more time together, he became into a caring figure in my child's life. My parents supported our growing intimacy after observing it. They could see my happiness at being with Jake. But not everything went as planned. The interference from Michael's parents persisted, as they called and insisted on seeing their grandchild. They pretended as if nothing had changed, refusing to accept the devastation that Michael had inflicted. Despite how tiring it was to put up with their constant criticism, I remained firm and established limits in order to keep my peace. Na invited me over for coffee one day. She asked me how I was doing as we sat in her quaint kitchen. I talked to Michael's parents about my difficulties and the difficulties of being a single mother. After giving it some careful thought, she remarked, Emma, you've come so far. Never allow someone to disturb your tranquility. It is your right to safeguard both your happiness and the well of your child. Her remarks were inspiring. Na was now more than just a neighbor. She was a real friend and mentor. Mark, her spouse, further extended his assistance by giving me legal advice and educating me on my rights. I noticed that I was becoming stronger and more self-assured as the months went by. I began accepting assignments as a freelance photographer, something I had always wanted to do. It was good to follow my passion and support my child. Every picture I shot served as a record of my journey and the new life I was creating. My friendship with Jake was still going strong. He truly cared about myself and my child, and was kind and nice. He turned to face me one evening as we were taking in the sunset and said, Emma, I love you. I want to support you both at every turn, even though I know it's been a difficult path. My eyes welled with tears when I recalled how far I'd gone from feeling neglected and abandoned. I had love and support all around me now. I love you too, I murmured, glancing at Jake. I appreciate your presence throughout everything. Finally, after months of adversity and perseverance, things started to get better in my life. After the divorce was finalized, I was no longer bound by the poisonous relationship that had been a burden for me. It was a bittersweet day when the divorce papers were signed. In addition to a profound sense of relief, I had a sense of loss. This is a new beginning. My lawyer, who had been a constant ally, comforted me. 
You're acting morally for both yourself and your child, Emma. After the divorce, I concentrated on creating a secure and contented life for my child and myself. As my freelancing photography business grew, I discovered that I enjoyed documenting special moments for other people. Every project I worked on was a step closer to my self-actualization and freedom. Jake was a source of love and support all the time. He admired my path and understood my past. He proposed to me one evening when we were eating dinner with my folks. It was an intimate, uncomplicated moment. With optimism in his eyes, he asked, Emma, will you marry me? I made no hesitation. Yes, Jake, I will, I answered, shedding happy tears down my cheeks. My heart felt full as my parents beamingly smiled. Mark and Na were ecstatic for us. Na, the one who'd been there from the beginning, hugged me tightly. Warmly, she said, Emma, you deserve all the happiness in the world. I was thankful every day for the unexpected turn our relationship had taken, and their kid was a beautiful man. Michael and his parents persisted in attempting to intervene, but I set strict limits. I made sure they honored our space with Mark's guidance and legal backing. I was no longer affected by their comments. I was willing to defend my tranquility and the welfare of my child because I felt stronger and more self-assured. I discovered a new rhythm in life as time went on. My days were occupied with photo shoots, hilarious exchanges with Jake, and the basic pleasures of witnessing my child develop. Our house was a happy and loving place, and Jake was an amazing father figure. Sitting in her garden one day, Nina and I discussed how much had changed. Emma, you've gone a long way. I'm really happy for you, she grinned. I was filled with appreciation as I surveyed the colorful flowers. You are the reason I succeeded, Nina. I responded. Your friendship means the world to me. My background, which had been characterized by emotional abuse and neglect, had become a story of empowerment and self-reliance. I had discovered my strength and my voice. Now, I had a lot of loving and supportive individuals in my life who accepted me for who I was. I want to end by encouraging everyone who is listening to know that there is always hope, despite how dire and challenging things may appear to be. Keep yourself surrounded by positive and encouraging individuals. Step by step and never forget how valuable you are. Happiness and empowerment are at your fingertips. I appreciate your interest in my trip.